Zygopetalum. Orchid ninjas unite. I am over the moon to be able to do this care collab together with plants and other things. Michelle's life on repeat, attainable green and orchids and finbos. Because I have a success story here with my zygo and uh, yeah, I don't want to go walking off into the sunset happy end and think that it's all wonderful and great and I know what I'm doing. But for the moment, I am enjoying this blooming so very, very much because it's been a struggle for three years and I can not actually contribute as to what I did in order to bring this zygopatalum back to life because I bought her at our local garden center who have the zygos and all the other orchids in this normal natural peat moss, which I cleaned up and she got the entire shebang of treatment just in case of snails in that media. And I sprayed away with hydrogen peroxide, washed her down, let her dry outside on the laundry rack the whole nine yards, thinking I was doing the right thing and bam, nope. It was a major setback because I was too vigorous and too radical on the root system. I had gone way beyond what was necessary in order to clean her up and to put her into the classic setup that I use, lecker and self-watering. Yep, I went all ninja on this one. I was not going to risk a zygopetalum in case I wasn't getting rid of all the snails. And promptly, I almost killed my zygopetalum from too much love. <laughs> so, welcome. <laughs> yes, I'm happy. And the sun is shining. Can you believe it? Woo! -hoo! All right. I can share with you that leave zygopetalum roots alone as much as possible. In my case, it's a bit more difficult because I have to get rid of any organic media because I want to grow inorganically but there's other ways to go about it. It can be more gentle. You don't have to go all nuts with regards to the hydrogen peroxide. You can also long-term watch the orchid and see if there are any snails that you can then address topically. You don't have to do what I did, literally wash her down, hose her down, put her through the wringer and hung her out to dry. <laughs> don't do that. Be kind to your zygo. It set her back quite a lot. It brought very much spotting on the leaves and then the bulbs back here, these ones, they all drop their leaves very, very quickly. Even that new growth that did then come out right there, you can see this bulb was tiny and nothing to write home about. So that dropped its leaf and I thought she was a goner. And then in 2019, she forgave me and put out this new growth right here, which I did not train towards the sun because by that time I had done her enough injustice. I thought, okay, if you're going to grow at a slant, just grow, please just grow. And she did. And for the most part, the leaves are clean. And then she put out this new growth and then I got bold again and I started to train it and I made sure that it was facing the other way. The light source was over here. So you can see I have a little bit of a kink in that growth and that bulb. No problem, she still kept the leaf. She kept the leaf. We have some markings on the leaf here. I'm not bothered by that. I've seen worse, trust me with this one, I've seen worse. And lo and behold, she throws out another growth right at the end of 2020. And the beauty with zygopetalums, you know that they're going to bloom or not. You don't have to wait because the spikes will develop prior to the new growth actually maturing. You can see that she is now beautifully in bloom with two spikes. And down here, the bulb is just starting to swell. It's not as big a bulb as the previous one. So I'm going to have to still watch out and see that I do her justice. I don't fertilize her that much. When I fertilize, she does get 300 parts per million, but she gets a lot more flushes in between than any other, let's say, orchid that I would have in a semi-hydro setup or a self-watering setup, as is this case. 
And the reason being is because she is sort of like semi-terrestrial. When I hear terrestrial and I hear orchid, the two of them for me, that's perfect. Into Lekka they go. I started growing with Lekka and semi-hydro houseplants back in the 80s when it became all the rage in Germany. And I thought this is the weirdest thing ever, but let me give it a go because I did not like to be working with soil indoors when I needed to do something with my potted house plants and I had carpet everywhere. So I went all in on this new concept of semi-hydro for house plants. And I was not disappointed. So because it was invented or let's say directed at terrestrial plants in general to begin with, when I hear orchid and terrestrial, I'm like, you're into Lekka and we're gonna figure it out. And that is why I never looked back except for the fact that do not be so radical with your zygote. Be kind. I'm losing this bud here, which is concerning. And I'm wondering if it's because of the radical temperatures that we've had. But in case there is any bugs in here, I'm so happy with the blooming that I do have. I'm not going to get greedy and worry about what's going on in here if there is a pest in there. And that looks to me like a mealy bug got in there and then it died as it should. But there you go. If there's a pest, I've got so many beautiful, beautiful blooms. We'll get rid of that. Watch out for all those little pests. She has been outside now for the last, well, since November, because they can tolerate cold temperatures. They're sort of notorious for being cool growers. I am in southern Spain, so I can't actually say I'm growing her cool, but during the winter she lives outside simply because, yay, I've got more shelf space indoors. She doesn't have to be indoors. And my temperatures can drop down to five degrees Celsius, maybe four. This year was a complete and utter exception, so I'm going to stick with five. And then, of course, I have day temperatures in the winter at around 17, 18 degrees. Today, I breathe without chattering teeth. It's a 19 degrees, it's wonderful. But in the summer, I do bring her inside. I do not expose her to any of the heat that we experience here. She doesn't get the hot, dry winds because I have her on a glass shelf, well away from any open terrace door that might blow in some hot air. So I keep her protected from that. But airflow, she does get. And the more airflow, that a zygote can get, in my opinion, based on what I've noticed the last two winters with these growths growing, even if there is more humidity in the air, the more airflow they can get, the less spotting they can get. And believe me, the amount of light these guys can tolerate belies anything else that is being talked about them. I have her, as I said in the summer, right up against the glass on a glass shelf and there she gets super bright light but no direct sun because of the angle of the sun being so high in the sky but she gets a lot of light and now in the winter i mean we're just in the middle of march let's just say it's early spring but throughout the winter i have her on the top shelf of my south facing blooming alley where she gets the maximum amount of light that the winter can throw at her including direct sun and that is simply because the sun is not as strong and the aeration is given, which will always cool the leaves down. I am so pleased. I don't want to get ahead of myself. A repot is necessary soon, eventually, <laughs> because this growth here is not, there's not gonna be room for another growth in this pot. But now I'm a little bit more confident to be able to say the repot I can be more gentle with the roots because all I'm going to do, literally, depending on what I find in the pot, of course, but all I'm going to do is lift her out, check for the health of the root system, and just bump her up into a bigger pot and fill around with Lekka. As such, as a terrestrial, I would say, now that I've gotten her to survive my radical approach at the beginning, when she joined my collection, once she recovered from that, <laughs> She's just been great. Very, very easy to grow, in my opinion. Again, I don't want to jinx myself, 
But yeah, I am super pleased. I cannot tell you how grateful I am I can do this care collab together with plants and other things. Michelle's Life on Repeat, Attainable Green, and Orchids and Fienbos with a zygo in bloom. Yes, that feels so good, I cannot tell you. The blooms are awesome. This has now been open, um, let me think, three weeks already, and they still look magnificent, minus the bud that we just pinched off. They still look crisp, they feel firm, they have a waxy texture, and um, let me see what the camera says today, because sometimes depending on the light, the camera can show a yellowish background. They are more on the chartreuse side than they are on the yellow with the Bordeaux blotchings here. So it's more of a chartreuse green. As they age, they will get a bit yellower though. That's sort of their process as the blooms start to age but I love green blooms anyway. And then the contrast with that purple lip, the size of it, oh, and the fragrance. Oof, the fragrance of this one, yum. Roses, and then there's a hint and there's a kick, another undernote as you get closer and closer to the bloom. It's like a, a sharp, I don't wanna say spicy, but yeah, spicy, not, but not the chili kind. It, there's, there's a spice in there. Nutmeg is a bit too smooth, Cinnamon, yes, but if you think of um, cinnamon liqueur that is really strong, or cinnamon essence, that's it. If you think of an essential oil of cinnamon, that is the note that you get if you keep going at it and get closer and closer. I'll have to remember that for future reference. It's a cinnamon essential oil note that you get. Roses first, and then that. Lots and lots of flushing is all I can recommend for this orchid. This is what brought it through for me. They like a lot of fresh water, and I mean it. They like a lot of fresh water. If this one doesn't get flushed regularly, it's going to protest. So I always, even in the winter, especially in the summer, I always have my reservoir full. And today is flushing day. And that is what, how I can tell because of the mineral deposit on the leka there. Let me see if I can show you. You see the mineral deposit there? When that happens, that is because she's not absorbing the 300 parts per million that I chucked at her, and I am going to have to flush her. But seeing as the roots just dive into the media, I'm not particularly concerned about root burn. So that leka bead can stay. These roots will never ever be epiphytic or exposed to air. That's not how they grow. If you see them in nature, they're in leaf litter. They're on cliff rocks, but their roots are absolutely covered in leaf litter or underneath some trees with some rocks around. They are terrestrial, semi-terrestrial. The roots are not exposed to air. If you do have the occasional root exposed to air, then it's just not gonna make it. You see that? There. One decided to climb up and no, that's not gonna make it but the rest of her will make it. If I haven't explained everything correctly, if I haven't made myself clear because I was like a horse out of the gate, super excited here, then please let me know in the comments below and I will definitely elaborate further on what I do now and moving forward. But for now, I consider this a success and I'm really looking forward to plants and other things videos, as well as Michelle Life on Repeat, Attainable Green, and Orchids and Fien Boss. What a great gaggle of creators and orchid growers for a zygopetalum that has a notoriety to being complicated. And look how many channels are participating on this care collab. So I thank all the channels. Their links will be in my description below. And if you are watching this video and you also have zygopetalums, even if they are a no ID, that's not the point. The point is to get as many people to join in on these care collabs. If you have one, you would like to join in on the next care collab, please feel free to send me an email. My email is in the description below and I will be so happy to put you on the list so that more and more people can join in on the updates. Oh, just a quick note. My zygopetalum, to my understanding, 
is a no ID. But I have been told, and I've looked her up, that it's a trozy blue. And I think that would match, but it's, it's so difficult to tell on the web and then you see your blooms. But trozy blue looks pretty, pretty close to me. So my Zygopedalum no ID might be a trozy blue. Thank you everybody so much for watching for your time. I hope that you enjoyed this video if you're planning to or going to or already are growing in LECA and self-watering. Now you know. Be kind to your zygo when you bring her home. There is no need to go all ninja on the plant and then just observe to see if there are any snails or any pests developing after the fact because if you do it before, it might just cause your zygote to fail. So take it from me, don't do it. It took me three years to get to this point. And I'm just so glad I got to this point. So thank you everybody so very much for watching. Really appreciate your time. Have a wonderful day. Stay safe. Take care. Bye.